What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up? Renee Montgomery is here. Hello, hello. Uh, you're about to see for the first time what the court looks like in the NBA bubble. This was a secret for a long time. How is it going to look with the Black Lives Matter written across the hardwood, the social distancing? Well, here it is. Here are photos and video you can see right there. I think it looks pretty amazing, actually. No fans are going to be allowed at any of the three courts in the Walt Disney World in Orlando bubble, but it looks as official and professional and high level as it can possibly get. Obviously, the league has decided to put Black Lives Matter across the hardwood um, because they were working with the players, and that was important to the players, that there was a, a, a nod to the social justice movement that's going on outside of the bubble. And I think that looks pretty good right there. I, the players seem to be reacting pretty, pretty well to it. And then if you look at the area where the coaching staff and other people that are in the building will be sitting, it looks like there's, uh, you know, all the chairs are spread out, right? All the announcers, the reporters, photographers, media people, they're all going to be spread out, social distancing. It looks safe. This on the heels of reports that zero of all of the NBA people who are in the bubble tested positive for coronavirus on the last round of testing. I mean, look, the NBA is set to tip off July 30th. We're days away. This is pretty exciting stuff, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, this is very exciting. First of all, zero positive tests. That's got to be the most exciting thing about it because health should be at the forefront. So when health is at the forefront and you have zero positive tests, that's that's one. You're doing something great. Also, the players' concerns should be at the forefront. So players have voiced their opinion that something needs to be done on the court. Something needs to be done to show our efforts off the court. And the NBA and the MBPA, they met the call. I mean, look at the court. It looks professional. Right. It wasn't halfway done. You know, you hate when people are like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And they do it halfway. The NBA went all out and did it the proper way. So I'm excited for July 30th. Yeah, me too. And I think, that, right, the most important thing, because if we, if the players are sick, we aren't going to have basketball. So like Renee said, I think the biggest thing here is that no positive tests. Everybody is in the bubble. So unless the bubble is <laughs> pierced, is penetrated, we should be good and we should have basketball. You remember when this was a huge debate only weeks ago, one, we didn't know if the players were going to be healthy. Two, we didn't know if the players were willing to even play basketball this season. But now everyone's healthy. They're in the bubble and we are almost ready to go here. It's going to be great to have sports back. Yeah, but one of the interesting things is that as certain players are being asked about, you know, how excited they are to get back on the court, some of them are ref they're deflecting. They're not talking about the game. They're continuing to put the spotlight on social justice issues outside the bubble. People like Dwight Howard, people like Jeremy Grant, people like Tobias Harris, when asked about how they're getting ready, how they're preparing, they, they talked about Breonna Taylor and, and the case going on outside the bubble with, with her. She was killed in Kentucky and it was the cops... Uh, executed a no-knock warrant and and there was a shooting and she was shot and killed and people want those cops prosecuted. Here's a sample of some of the comments they've been making. And before we run the video, I want to tell you, we spoke to Brianna Taylor's mother. We actually got a comment from her who says she's been paying attention to the NBA players and, and all that they're doing to keep her case alive. Take a look at the video. There's things that have been happening that you know, we still need to discuss. Uh, Brianna Taylor and the... the, the the people who uh, uh, did the heinous uh, incident against her, uh, they're still free, they're out there living their best life. We want to make sure that Daniel Cameron will arrest the cops and officers involved with Breonna Taylor's death. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say. So look, like I said, we spoke, we actually got in touch with Breonna Taylor's family because you also see people like LeBron James and Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony, a lot of big NBA players and also a lot of big WNBA players. In fact, the whole league is wearing warm-up shirts that say Breonna Taylor's name on them. Renee, you know a lot of these people who are pretty much everybody that's playing in the bubble and, and how special that's been. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's been like for the players? Yeah, so the players, you know, there was this big debate when I sat out, you know, are the players that are going inside the bubble, are they distracting from the message? Are they taking away from the movement? And I've said it from the beginning. I don't think so. I think that we're going to see a lot of things happen inside the bubble that propel the movement, that continue the movement. And you're seeing it now in the NBA, the courts, the WNBA, every player is going to have Breonna Taylor's name on their jersey. That the hashtag say her name. Well, the whole league is going to say her name. And I love that Breonna Taylor's mother is speaking out and encouraging the players because 
that's good for, for players, for me to know, you know, these are not just hashtags, you know, and we're using hashtag Brianna Taylor a lot, but this is somebody's child. So I love to hear that, that her family sees the efforts. Obviously we all want the same goal and an arrest, but I love to just see that there's a, that connection there. This is someone's child. Well, here's what Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer, said. She said, quote, everyone raising their voices for justice are what keeps this family going each day. What is being done by the NBA and the WNBA is amazing. Now it's time for the attorney general to listen, to charge everyone responsible for Bree's murder and get overdue justice. Bree should be with us. The world was a better place with her. And then her attorney also told us that uh, Tamika was a part of a Zoom meeting with over 30 NBA players, including Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony on Sunday, where they continue to discuss how to best use their platforms to put pressure on prosecutors in Kentucky to bring everyone to justice who was involved in her killing. So again, Renee, I know we just touched on it, but when you hear those words from Breonna Taylor's mother, how does it make you feel? It makes it feel worth it. You know, for somebody like me who sat out, you know, it's highly publicized why I sat out. It feels worth it because we're not sitting out just for, you know, everyone's getting caught in the hashtags. These are real people. This movement is about a real thing, real people. So I love to see that the NBA is working directly with the family. The WNBA is doing the same. So this is what the movement is about. Yeah, absolutely. It, like Renee said, it was tragic. It was senseless. Justice is long overdue here. And I agree. Things Look, the news cycle is very short, and something is always bound to happen that is going to capture the country's attention. The way to fight against that is to have big stars continually uh, to, to make people not forget about these, uh, uh, some of these things that have, that have happened. And, and Breonna Taylor is uh, example number one here. So I agree. It's best these guys keep on and these girls keep on uh, keeping her name in the spotlight. Don't let anybody forget. That's how justice will be served.